You're very welcome to another episode of the Scaling Your Business podcast. On this episode, we're staying in Ireland. We're actually going to the Midlands. We're going to Tullamore in Offaly to be joined by Anna Carmody. Anna, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, Rain. Thanks for having me. Yeah, delighted to have you on the show. Um, you're the founder of Little Red Edu, uh, and you've got a lot of PR recently from some of the awards you've won. We'll dive into that a little deeper later in the podcast, but let's bring it back to Tullamore, Offaly. You grew, you grew up there. What were your early days like there? Any standout moments? Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, so I'm from Tullamore and Offaly, um, and actually I'm, I'm live at, I live out here in the middle of nowhere, in the kind of um, in the woods. But, beautiful. But, um, so it is beautiful, especially during the pandemic. It was very nice and peaceful around this area. Um, so um, just kind of early early days, like where we are um, in our garden, we have like these little red squirrels and they're real unique um, and very rare. Usually the gray squirrels, I think, attack the red squirrels. So um, yeah. we've this little red squirrel that hops along the trees and um, that's what inspired me to come up with our, our logo for Little Red Edu. Um, so just that kind of uniqueness and playfulness of the red squirrel. And it's funny now, kind of any time something significant happens uh, to the business, I might look out the window and see the red squirrel at just the right moment. So it's kind of like a little symbol um, for the business and for kind of the achievements that we've been making so far as well. Yeah, it's th that's a great uh, story behind the name. And uh, I, I, I've not spent a lot of time at Offaly. I was actually only in Offaly maybe three, four months ago. Um, but beautiful place in terms of nature as well um side story my girlfriend's parents we, i was talking before the recording that, that we visit them probably every second weekend they live up the dublin mountains and uh in a one set like 30 minute period over the recent weekend i was up there there was like a hare a couple of squirrels cows sheep uh deer and, it, and i was like taking it back on this is the type of place that I want to set up a future house just because I, I'd be from a busy kind of city place. And although that has, that has its perks and advantages, just kind of hitting the reset button and going to a place like that is just amazing. So uh, I can see why you're fond of uh, Tullamore and all that that has to offer. Sticking with your early days, uh, I mentioned we talk about influences. So who do you think influenced you the most, had the biggest impact or kind of inspired you the most when you were growing up? Um, I I would say like my my parents are a big big part of like what inspired me. Like my my mother was always very entrepreneurial, and she had her own coffee shop in Tullamore. Um, wow. people kind of laugh about it. She was like the first to bring the lattes and the mochas to Tullamore. <laughs> I think back when it was just coffee. Um, so she had the coffee shop, and that kind of inspired me to see how to set up your own business and. Um, my father also is an accountant and he had his own practice as well. Um, but I suppose even going further back than that, um, my grandparents who were from Knock and Mayo, they had their own farm, but they were very entrepreneurial and kind of they created like the house was a bed and breakfast and the farm they turned into a really successful piggery. And um, oh. yeah, those kind of influences, I think maybe without me even noticing, they influenced me more than I thought when I was younger. Yeah, you've got the entrepreneurial spirit from generation to generation. Shout out to your parents, your mother, bringing good coffee to Offaly and, and your grandparents. A couple of things I know about you from my research. Uh, you've been to places like Berlin, Vietnam, featured in the Sunday Business Post 30 Under 30, as well as the Irish Independent list as well. So not just one, but two lists. But also, and I was surprised by this because one of the places I go to research my guest is YouTube. And when I typed in your name, someone that looked like you came up, but it was she was singing music. And then I found out that it was you. And I can't stop listening to the uh, Summer Air song. It is amazing. So kudos to you for that. That's if I'll, I'll, I'll probably exit or uh, at the end of the show, I'll play that tune as, as a snippet. And then if anybody wants to listen to more music, I'll leave links to Spotify, iTunes, YouTube below. But uh, is there anything that you're into or curious about that not a lot of people would know about you? Um, yeah, I guess the music is probably one thing that uh, people don't really know too much. And that I just released a new single on Friday. So that kind of 
is like my my happy balance I suppose with like when I finish up my business it's a nice release to go and write songs and play music and I do a couple of gigs as well um yeah that's kind of one the one of the surprises I guess but uh um yeah it, I I am an, I'm an illustrator as well so I illustrated my first like uh children's book which kind of started off my entrepreneurial journey um, and art would have been art would have been kind of a big um presence in my life I suppose all of growing up like painting acrylic and um all of those kind of things videography and I was always quite creative and um, but I I never liked kind of uh maths or numbers and it's only actually now in my later kind of um adult life that I I really like um maths and I'm starting to enjoy it but because I'm learning it more in a creative practical sense I suppose so Little Red Edu is your current venture. Uh, for those who don't know what it is, can you tell us what it is? And then I'm curious to know where did, I know where the name came from now, but where did the idea come from? Yeah, okay. So, well, Little Red Edu, it's a platform for three to six-year-olds to learn and speak English as a second language. And it's combining speech recognition with augmented reality. But it's most importantly, it's teaching children through play. Um, so where that came from, I guess it's like my own experience in education. Um, I went to like an, an all girls school uh, in Tullamore, a kind of public school, and I was always an average grader. So I was always like a C student or a D student. Um, mm. My sisters would have been kind of higher achievers in terms of grades. And, and that used to knock me quite a lot. And, um, I, I never really felt like I was good at something. So we'd have, you know, grandparents coming over and like, oh, Anna, you're going to be an artist, you know, in your little shed out the back garden or something. Because, um, you know, art was really the only thing that I was good at, or so I thought. Um, but I, really, I felt like um, school and the system, the educational system, it wasn't helping me reach my full potential. Mm. It was only until after school that I realized my full potential. Um, when I went to the National College of Art and Design and the creative methods of teaching there just really inspired me and in how they're bringing out the best of their students. Um, so I wanted to do the same. I wanted to create a product or multiple products that would help children reach their full potential and through play. You've got a passion for teaching now. Um, uh, as someone who's related to a fair few teachers, usually there's a moment where they discover that passion um perhaps there was a you know standout lecture you've went you've mentioned your your college days or, or or earlier days in in primary school or secondary school that uh invested in you or uh made you look at things differently was that the case with you yeah i think there yeah definitely there's um one teacher like that really stands out to me and it was actually it was a tutor in my college in ncad I, can, I don't know if I can name his name, John Wade was actually his name, but uh, he was just lovely. He was so positive and encouraging. And I remember not really having that uh, throughout kind of even school or NCAD, even in my first year. Um, he just, he could see, he saw a spark in me when I, I was actually creating this project and it was, it was a mad looking thing. It was like this bird on like wheels that could move around and could sing. And I was programmed, I programmed it to make, to light up and do all sorts but um he kind of saw the spark in me and I guess like he kind of encouraged me as well um with that project and that encouragement I think it sparked me off and made me feel like oh I can actually maybe I can do something here maybe I actually have potential here mm. to uh, create some exciting projects um and that was a, a kind of good spark that I had from from someone that invested their uh their attention into me and their help and support as well Amazing to see the impact teachers can have on people. Um, you've started your own business. We're talking about it at the moment. But for anyone who's considering starting a business, maybe they realize that they've been out of work for the last while and they don't want to go back to their old job or they want to spend more time in other areas of their life for whatever different variety of reasons. But if they want to start their own business, uh, sometimes it can be confusing, especially if you're not from a family of entrepreneurs where you can go and ask unlimited questions without annoying a parent. Um, how would you, would you have any advice or how would you go like start with the why, start with how, start with the website? What would you say to someone who has an idea 
Mel it might have it on paper, but that's about it. Um, I would say like it, everything starts with passion. And I think there's a word for it in uh, German. And I just can't remember. I was listening to the podcast last night, but it's like leading something or it's like a basic passion is like in, in German, they say it's like pain and passion together. But like mm. there some level of pain to, that you have to endure to get um, this level of passion to really bring something forward. And I just I know myself from working in previous projects, you can do it for so long, but it's very difficult to withstand the difficulties and the challenges that are um, come up along the way um, unless you're extremely passionate about it and really want it to that's the best way for it to succeed is like, it depends on how passionate you are about it. Um, but what I would say is a lot of people are stumbled by fear and like they, they don't continue on with the project or they don't start a project even. It might be, you know, this long kind of lost idea that they have in their head for years, but they never actually just um, take the first steps to starting it. And I think, you know, there's just not, to be um, so overwhelmed by um, worrying about fear of, uh, of failure and just do it um, would be my my uh, best advice, kind of a Nike, a Nike quote there, just do it. Nice, yeah, I like it. Uh, after college uh, or university, wherever the listener is in the world, uh, you worked in permanent TSB, a bank, uh, in an administrator role, worked in a similar role in HSE. You also spent some time, as I've alluded to earlier on, as an English teacher. Were you able to carry any of the lessons learned or skills from those roles into your current venture? And if so, can you give an example of what one of those might be? Yeah, absolutely. Like when, when I left, um, or even just before college, I, I was working in like VHI healthcare and I was only about 18 and that just it it showed me kind of how a company works and um, you know how the different departments the different people's roles and how it all makes up um this company and how everyone is important like even the um not even the but the the person doing the mail um which was me or even the person filling up the coffee or the you know all of those even those small jobs um mm. as important as kind of the the, the bigger kind of roles and and um I worked in all of those kind of areas um from the age of 18 I worked in lots of different kind of companies in administration roles um even during my summers in college and it really helped me to see different different departments and being able to work in in teams and different kinds of teams and understanding the overall operations I think of a business and um, that definitely had a big part to play in me being able to kind of um, operate my own startup collaborative thinking uh, or may I say the power of a good network um, I'm a member of a group called Magnate but I can see that you've recently been selected as if I've got it right here one of 20 startups in this year's uh, NDC or pre-accelerator powered by Dogpatch Labs great crowd over there um, what role if any has connecting with like-minded individuals had on you and is that something that you would encourage others to do find their group of people um yeah oh like especially during the pandemic when you're kind of isolated and you're working in your own little office like ndrc and dog patch labs um has been such an amazing way to bring yourself to like close to people that are in the same like going through the same motions as you and um, some people in different levels and different you know maybe a bit further on or a bit further back um mm. but all going through the same motions and that was really helpful and even just the power of the cohort and the network of you know oh i'll give you this contact or I'll, you know people sharing and networking and um, that as well just brought so much um help into all of our businesses and um, the mentors and the advisors within that, um, I just couldn't recommend it enough. I think it's it's a really great place to go and uh, to build your business and they really work alongside the founder and their founder first, which is um, exactly what you need. Is there a favorite part or aspect of like being a founder or leading a company for you? 
Um, I guess it's those moments, like those really good moments, um, like on a team call where you can just feel you're sitting back and you're just observing it and you can see people starting to kind of connect together themselves and starting to come up with, um, you know, starting to kind of build, build it themselves and with each other. And you can see just like, wow, this little spark, this little idea that came from my own experience and a couple of years ago is, has now created this like amazing kind of connection within our team. And um, there's just a, a kind of a really nice moment, a nice feeling in that when you can sit back and say, wow, this all started from that idea and it's really starting to build and take shape. I'd be keen to get your thoughts on this because you seem to be, well, you definitely are more invested in the education system uh, than I am on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and I noticed on your website, there's a part of it that touches on uh, augmented reality, although in, in beta mode at the moment. Um, have you got any predictions or thoughts on where the future of early education might be going? Yeah, um, even apart from like augmented reality is something that I, it's really what I started off with. It's like my baby. Like I think I, my, my children's book that I created with the augmented reality, um, it really showed me how you can engage children in a much more exciting way. Um, and just to see their little faces when they, when they can see all the characters and everything pop up to life through, you know, it looks like magic to them. And, um, these technologies are just they haven't been used enough in the classroom and even with that early years um age group um there's a kind of a level of hesitance i think around and depending on the market obviously china i think is that bit ahead in terms of technology mm. more susceptible to like using it um ireland is maybe it's starting to look at it but um for early years, they can't wear headset, so they can't use virtual reality because their eyes aren't fully formed yet. And um, so augmented reality really um, is an amazing technology to use for this age group. Um, and kids love it. They, they really are so engaged with it. And even for children with autism or ADHD, it's um, it's been tested and trialed um, with groups of, of children with learning difficulties and um it's proven to be really helpful to them as well so it's kind of adding that level of um you know inclusion as well within the classroom um and within that age group is there a and the answer to this might be no but is there a challenge or objection that you've come up against over the last let's say 12 to 18 months that you didn't expect or account for and if there is how did you tackle it or overcome it uh <laughs> so many <laughs> too too many challenges but um i guess are you, are you kind of more talking about the technology or the the product or in either or just anything that comes to mind so we can well, we can spend a little time talking through it yeah i would say like and probably every every founder would probably come up with the same thing and in, in an early stage startup is like funding um trying to keep everything rolling at the same time and there's um i think i feel like we've been in this like chicken and egg scenario for quite a long time where um we have this amazing product and concept and we have our markets like uh you know that are really excited to trial it um but funding has been a blocker for us and it's delayed and delayed and delayed and even for product development um you know we have to kind of be really we have to be really thoughtful, I suppose, on how we can make things cheaper um, for our MVP um, so that we can like afford it and we can get into trialing and testing. Um, but, you know, if I suppose we had the funding, things would be a lot faster for us and we'd be able to kind of push things along. So I do think that that's been quite a delay for us. And has being part of, you know, any accelerators or perhaps Dogpatch Labs been able to help you with connecting with people who potentially could invest in 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 the future to, the near future to come yeah no definitely um dog patch labs have uh, opened up kind of a, a lot of doors for us and there have been that there has been a lot of interest um in little red um 
and you know we're I'm continuously in talks with investors and um yeah I guess it's like pushing us on to the to the next stage and we're we are pre we're pre-revenue still and I think that's the biggest challenge for any startup when you're pre-revenue you just want to get mm-hmm. that product validated and get into your first get your first customer signed um with the contract signed and you want to kind of get it moving um mm-hmm. so I guess it's dog patch labs has been a really big help for um you know the support there and the advice on how to you know what to concentrate on because you know you have so many things going on at the same time like there's team and there's team dynamics and there's product and there's you're looking for funding um that like i think dog patch labs just tell you to like right this is what you need to focus on and usually it's customer first like always focus on the customer mm-hmm. uh, and that's been kind of i've been really driving that um into our business now as well in terms of our product and that we we need to go customer first with every decision that we make with our product you're an author yourself but are there any books podcasts uh that you would read or listen to that uh yeah are there any books or podcasts that you really listen to to invest in yourself is the question i'm probably trying to ask yeah um uh, there's so many (laughs) so many books but um i suppose with the podcast how i built this i think i'm sure a lot of people um actually do listen to how i built this but it just uh really gives a lot of like motivation um to hear kind of lots of big company stories like and how they started so small and became like a, a unicorn so it's like it's possible kind of a thing and hearing that they went through some of the same challenges as me um definitely helps like so whenever i'm kind of feeling that bit defeatist like uh, around different areas of business i can stick on that podcast make up a tea and you kind of instantly feel that bit better that okay uh, you know to kind of keep yourself you're not alone yeah nice a uh, couple couple more questions for you uh i know that you've uh, you've been to vietnam and berlin but given restrictions i don't know if you've been abroad recently but if you could go anywhere in the world right now where would you like to go to back to vietnam <laughs> back to vietnam what's what, what what did you like so i've not been to vietnam yet what did you like about vietnam um oh just everything like the food um the people the people are so humble and kind um and that like i had my own little um moped over there so i used to love driving on the the mad roads it was kind of like organized chaos is what i called it um but it was just so like um they say that like your your brain produces new like uh like actually new brain cells whenever you're um you go and see something new or a new place you start oh. your mind starts opening up um and that's really how i felt in vietnam i started to like see different sides of me i'd never even knew where um i had so like um it definitely tests and trials you to go to like um a place that's so far so different to your own home place and uh, yeah vietnam. well hopefully it's not long till you're back on a scooter uh, somewhere in vietnam but for now uh i don't know who you live with but all your loved ones humans animals anything they're all safe but your house is burning down and you can only save one item what one item would that be i think i'd save my guitar (laughs) good choice good choice well if if your future tunes are anything like uh summer air then uh saving your guitar is a great choice (laughs) I'd like you to imagine, final question, by the way, I'd like you to imagine it's the year 2030. Like we're speaking right now and it's 2030 and we're looking back on the last decade. Uh, you can answer this personally or professionally, but what would you like to be looking back on? Um, I would like to look back on this time, I guess, and, and coming out of it and continuing mm. with Little Red and ensuring that we make it make it to the top as uh, um you know we want to make this a globally recognized educational company and Mm -hmm. children all around the world uh reach their full potential through play so we want to be recognized for for that and um i hope that looking back on the journey and kind of seeing how looking at how far we've come is what i'd like to say i'm sure i look back on this time and be like 
oh my, I can't believe I did that or <laughs> what was I thinking? But uh, I even do that when I look back three years ago, but um, mm. I think you just you grow with the business, you know, and that's exactly it's, it's a sign of progress. Sometimes I look back six months ago at like, you know, potential documents I've written or, you know, prep work for speeches and I'll go, wow, that's embarrassing. I would never say that on stage today. So I guess, although embarrassing, it's a sign of progress that you've moved forward from the previous six months, but for today, Anna Carmody, thank you very much for being my guest on the Scaling Your Business podcast. I wish you nothing but the best going forward um, and uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much, Rena. Really appreciate you having me. Um, lovely chat.